Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University. The scene tonight of this Atlantic Coast Conference matchup. The Terrapins of the University of Maryland against the nationally ranked Blue Devils of Duke University. It'll be Danny Perry to jump center against All-American Len Bias. Lenny Wirtz will toss it at center court. As you take a look at the series record between these two schools and Maryland gets the opening tip off, Jeff Baxter will slowly walk it out of the backcourt against the defense of Tommy Amaker. Well, right off the bat, it seems as though Maryland's going to come out playing some pattern ball. They can't afford to let this game get out of hand, particularly in a high-scoring, fast-paced type of uh, situation. Um, Duke would like to play an up-tempo style of basketball. They do not want to have Maryland dictate the style of play here tonight. Turn around by bias, and that's something Lynn, they had a hard time doing a few nights ago against NC State is get the ball inside of the big guy. And if they can't get the ball to Lenny Bias, they've got no one to score. He carries the load. That's the one thing that has probably caused the problem for Maryland more than anything else. Their inability to get some offensive help for Bias. They battle for the ball at the end line, and Duke will keep it. And as we mentioned at the top, one of the key matchups will be whoever Jeff Baxter guards. It seems that he started out on Johnny Dawkins, and right away Duke went to post Dawkins up, try to get him a high percentage shot. Henderson's open off the inbounds pass, and he ties it up at 2-2. And that's the other thing we spoke about. David Henderson, if he gets off early, the Terps are in for a long night. Lefty promised some lineup changes after the loss to NC State, and he fulfilled that promise. He's got, of course, John Johnson starting in the backcourt, and they blow a whistle and call an offensive foul against Maryland. Duke gets it back, and Tony Massenburg, the young man starting in the middle. I think that was a bit of a push-off. One of the Maryland players, I believe, got a bit frustrated and not being able to get open and kind of used his hands rather than his body to get open. No foul call. They just turn it over on the palming violation and now Duke comes back with a game tied at two and 18.46 to go in the first half. We are just underway at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Dawkins goes baseline. Check there by Baxter. Henderson bounce feeding inside Allery. Banks shot up and in. There's a lot of hand play inside. This game is starting out to be a physical type of ball game. Duke four. Maryland two. The Terps come back with a basketball. They find Bias open inside. He is really hammered by Allery, and Bias squares off. And as I just mentioned, it is going to be a physical game. You've got tempers flaring. Mike Krzyzewski, as you mentioned, is worried that his team did not come out aggressively, and he's also worried that they may be flat after those two tough defeats. Well, here's Bias. He has scored the first three points for the Maryland Terrapins. They are down by one. Just a, an outstanding basketball talent, this man. That's the only way to describe his multifaceted abilities. It's all even at 4-4. Tommy Amaker calls out the play as he brings it front court against the freshman Johnson. Good play defensively as the ball was knocked away by freshman Tony Massenburg. He comes up with the ball and gives it to Jeff Baxter. Pretty heady play by a freshman who just stepped up to the penetration. Derek Lewis setting a high pick. But Duke defensively not having any problems with it. Bias working on Henderson. Stops, turns, pops, and it's rebounded by Dawkins. Dawkins will pull up and let fly. Bingo. That's the Maryland transition game that we were speaking about. They've got to get back quicker on defense, which they did, but no one picked up the ball hand. A guy like Johnny Dawkins cannot get that deep into the defensive area of the Maryland Terrapins without being picked up. Duke by two, six to four. John Johnson has the ball, trying to kick it off inside to Bias, breaking low and underneath. And Tommy Amaker whistle for the Duke personal foul. And Maryland is trying to set the precedent right now. John Johnson tried to penetrate. He was getting inside that 15-foot line that we talked about. That way, Tommy Amaker has to play him. He can't leave. He can't double-team Len Bias. There's the way it happened the first time these clubs got together back on the 4th of January. Duke won 81-75. Really not that close a game because Duke laid on a 17-point lead. Maryland made a run at the end to make it a bit more respectable. Len Bias, a man in motion off the ball. That baseline jumper, and boy, you can color it too. He is as good a baseline shooter as there is maybe in all of basketball. Well, those great offensive players want the ball. That time he did. Here's Amaker. That's a charge. Nope, it's a block. And the basket will count. And Tommy Amaker will go for the trio. He's got to get back into the flow of the defense and maybe cut off 
the person who Lenny Bias left on defense. That way Amaker can't dish the ball off. Boy, is this crowd up for this game tonight? Unbelievable. 9-6, the Blue Devils in front of the Terps. Duke applies a backcourt pressure. Dawkins goes to the seat of his pants. No whistle. Jeff Baxter, the senior guard. Plays to Len Bias. Henderson with a hand in his face. Bias gets open, puts it up and in. And boy, is he on a roll early here. And David Henderson has to be wondering where his help is. That time Lenny Bias got into the paint more or less unmolested. Duke's going to have to concentrate a little bit on Len Bias. Bias doing his thing. Mike Krzyzewski, I'm sure, seated down on the Duke bench. Not surprised. Bias had 28 against him. Back on the 4th of January, Duke still won the game. Dawkins, his second long-range jump shot. Too long. Cleared off by Lewis of Maryland. And now it's in the hands of Len Bias. It's just a little too early to talk about patience, but from the floor. Maryland three of four and Bias has all three of those hoops for the Terps. John Johnson against Johnny Dawkins. Freshman against senior. Len Bias picked up now by Mark Allery. Tried to kick it off inside and Henderson did just that. He kicked it over the end line. And Henderson also did a good job of fronting Len Bias. He's not going to allow Len Bias to get the ball in the area in which he wants, unmolested. Well, here goes Bias again. That time, double team. Danny Perry, the freshman, knocks it away. Lead pass for Dawkins, who had to wait, but Henderson, the trailer. He throws it up, and he was fouled in the act. And this is the guy that Duke wants to get off early. He's the type of player that scores so well against particular teams, Maryland being one of them, that if he can accomplish that, he makes Mark Allery and Johnny Dawkins so much more effective. Teams can't concentrate on those two high scorers. He had one of his greatest games, all-around games, against Maryland in meeting number one. 25 points, seven rebounds, and four assists. Early here, he has four. And Duke leads it 11 to 8. On the stop and go dribble, Baxter cannot shake free of Amaker. That's Bias in the corner. And back outside to Jeff Baxter. Baxter one on one move, stops, fires. Battle for it inside, saved by Derek Lewis. Here's Bias turning and shooting, and he just like that has scored 10 points in four and a half minutes. And before that Baxter shot, Lenny Bias was the only Terp to attempt any shots from the floor. Uh, Jeff Baxter is a good senior. Alley oop, a little bit too high for Dawkins, but he came down with it and stuck it back in. Defensive player has not cannot turn his head, and also the person guarding the passer has to get up in the passer's face. You make that pass an awfully hard pass if you're on the man who's doing the passing. Duke 13, Len Bias 10. Baseline, jumper by Massenburg. Did not go, but he'll go to the free throw line and try to get him the other way. Pretty obvious. They come down and look for him every trip down the floor. Much more success already tonight than he had against Jimmy Valvano's Wolfpack. Nassenberg, 6'8", a freshman from Central High School in Sussex, Virginia. He's actually a true power forward, but playing in the middle for Maryland tonight. We're live at Cameron Indoor Stadium with a score, Duke 13, Maryland 12, and we'll be back. Well, Marty, right now I look for maybe Duke to come out even with more pressure, trying to front people inside, particularly to Len Biases and even Tony Massenberg to prevent the ball from getting in there and forcing that outside game of Maryland to, to try to make themselves known. Here comes Johnny Dawkins in open court. He is tough in that type of situation. Now pulls back up on the dribble and gives it off to Mark Allery. And on the other side, I think Maryland's going to try to force a bad shot. Well, it looked like David Henderson took one step too many and then went up to take the shot in which he drew a foul. And it is Henderson already two for two from the foul line. That foul charged against Derek Lewis. By bad shot, as we mentioned before, Maryland can test Duke's patience if they more or less pack it inside, force Duke to move the ball around a little bit. I may even look for a zone coming, coming up soon. Henderson off to an excellent start. Four out of four from the foul line. And the Duke Blue Devils have taken a 15 to 12 lead. Duke has extended their pressure, as we mentioned. They want to force that outside game. They're not going to allow Bias or Massenburg or Lewis to get the ball inside. Eric Lewis pinned to the sideline, but dribbles away from it. Allery belly up on him. Now Johnson trying to kick it off inside to Bias and off of Len's hands, and Duke gets it back. Mike Krzyzewski is substituted for the first time. He brings on Billy King, a 6'6 sophomore from Sterling, Virginia, into the Duke lineup. Well, Billy King's a good defensive player, and he's the type of player that moves the ball around. They leave Allery open, and he shows them why they shouldn't. 
Two field goals, four points for Mark Gallery, who over the last seven games or so has been playing about as well as anybody in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And that substitution of Billy King, who's guarding Lenny Bias now, is probably going to prove effective. Baxter, ill-advised drive into the paint. That results in a charging foul. Looking down onto the Maryland bench, we note that Keith Gatlin is in uniform, is seated with his teammates as you check out the all-even-up team fouls. Dawkins had a thought, elected to give it up to Billy King. Dawkins plays low, Ferry turnaround, jump shot, got it. And right now we can see a pattern developing on the defensive end for Maryland. Duke is going to Maryland's, Maryland's strongman, Lenny Bias. Lefty Drizell called a quick timeout, and now we're back at it again. Baxter and freshman John Johnson operating in the backcourt. Johnson with the ball, gives it right back to Baxter, had it skip away from him, but recovers very, very quickly. Duke has put Jay Billis in the game right now, and they switched Danny Ferry on Len Bias. They've been putting a lot of people on Bias, trying to wear him down on, on the Maryland offensive end. Bias out in the open court with that time-consuming dribble. The shot clock now down to 10. Maryland has made no effort to go to the basket on this particular possession, but now they're going to be forced to as Derek Lewis puts up the jump shot, and the rebound comes off to Billy King. Well, the Terps seem a bit unorganized on offense right now. They can't get it into bias, and everyone else seems to be standing around. Whistle off the ball. Foul called. And now Jay Billis and, and Derek Lewis with a little push against each other. Jeff Baxter and Derek Lewis have picked up two personal fouls. The Terps have yet to substitute. They're staying with their starters. Bias, Derek Lewis, Tony Massenberg up front. Johnny Johnson puts up the jumper. Had it rejected by Allery. It is Ferry on the kick out to King. Cross court Allery. Lay it up on the reverse. No good. Followed by King. Got it. It's good follow by Billy King. That time he got down on the break real well. Again, Maryland's defense has got to get back. Two players go down underneath the basket, and Johnson called for a charge. Maybe the Duke players are holding their position on the other players. We don't, we can't see that at the moment, but rather than pulling up, they're taking a the shot. Here's Henderson taking it to the hole that rolls in. 23 to 12 in favor of Duke as they build the lead to 11. And Maryland calls another timeout. Duke 23 and Maryland 12. We've got 12.05 remaining here in the first half, and Duke right now with a, a somewhat comfortable Len Elmore, 11-point lead over Maryland. Duke consequently has gotten some balls and putting it back up. Terry Long is in for Maryland, along with freshman guard Greg Narrett, and Duke gets it back. As a, a junior or senior, he should know a little bit better than that. That's a fifth turnover charge to the Maryland Terrapins. Billy King against Greg Narrett. Wants to give it up now. Billis muscling his way on long for position inside, and Duke turns it over. Well, that's a bit uncharacteristic for the Blue Devils, but again, they have a plan in mind, and they want to go at the weaker defensive players. That time, Billy King posted up real well inside. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. Um, yeah, it was Billy King who posted up real well inside and had an opportunity. Duke gives it away for the third time. It is Maryland with the ball. They work it to Bias on the baseline. He puts it up under great duress, and the rebound controlled by Jay Billis. The Duke sixth man off to Damon Henderson. Billis, he finds Weldon Williams open. And there's that pattern again. The man that Len Bias is guarding is usually the man that Duke is going to look to first. In order to stop a great score, many times you go at him on the defensive end. Make him work on that side. That takes a lot out of a person when he comes down on the offensive end. And Duke's lead now at 13, 25 to 12. Narrett kicks it off to Long, fading away. A bank shot misses, and the follow shot goes by Narrett. And a little bit more of that is necessary for the Terrapins. Once the ball goes into a player and you can recognize he's ready to shoot, you've got to fight for that position. Duke is a gambling team. They're sometimes out of rebounding position. There's a bid for the steal, but it goes out of bounds off Derek Lewis. Johnny Johnson comes back along with Tom Speedy Jones, a junior from Oak Hill, West Virginia, and Tony Massenberg. So Lefty making wholesale substitutions with his club trailing 25 to 14. And when Lenny Bias out, it's interesting to see who's going to pick up the offensive load for the Terrapins. Duke has Dawkins and Amaker at the guards. Billis, Weldon Williams, David Henderson up front. Henderson with the ball. Working on his man. Now plays to Dawkins. He drives, gets into heavy traffic, puts it up around, and it. Nice move in the lane by Johnny Dawkins. Good penetration. 
with bias out of there. Duke goes back to their regular offensive play. At the other end, the shot put up and in, and a blocking foul will be whistled against Williams. Free throw good. And the three-point play belongs to Tom Jones. It is 27-17 Duke. Just about at the halfway point of the first half as the Blue Devils maintain possession. Tarts picked up their defense a little bit and tried to apply some full court pressure. They almost got the turnover that time. Duke recycling its offense. Ball bounces away from Amaker. The ball gets away from Narrett. And they'll call a Duke foul on Tommy Amaker. Greg Narrett, 6'4 freshman out of Wilmington High School in Wilmington, Ohio. He was actually recruited on two fronts in high school as a fine football quarterback. Opted for basketball in Maryland's pleased that he did. Allery head faking, Jay Billis from 15. Allery inside, and he's fouled. In and out and in, and it's once again standing at an even dozen. 29-17, the Blue Devils have the better of it with 9.47 remaining in the first half. John Johnson arrests his dribble. Needs some help, finds it in Greg Narrett. Johnny Dawkins covers him step for step. Speedy Jones flies high. They whip it to Bias. Johnson journeys into the land of the Giants. Puts up the jump shot on a good move in heavy traffic. And Maryland, for the first time, looks pretty comfortable offensively. They got the ball to their man, Lenny Bias. But that time, Narrett and um, Jeff Baxter handled the ball really well. I'm sorry, John Johnson handled it very well. 29-19, Blue Devils. Dawkins with a fadeaway follow. Johnny Dawkins, in his career, has been absolutely poisoned against the Maryland Terrapins. He has had 20 or more points in eight of the nine previous games against Lefty's Ball Club. Having a good first half, Dawkins tonight with a total of eight. Narrett goes to the corner, plays to long, gets it back. Well, one thing about Dawkins, he's from the D.C. area. It's nice to show in front of the home folks. Bias has the ball knocked away. Massenburg picks it off, plays it to Jones. Still a lot of time on the shot clock for Maryland. 12, 11, 10 seconds now. they got to go to it. And this is the type of offensive play that Maryland should be doing. Bias, a rare miss. Barry, the kickoff to Amaker. He'll take it coast to coast. He hits the basket, and that might be an intentional foul. It will be. The basket for Amaker counts. He will be on the line and get two shots on top of it. 33 to 19. Amaker shooting for a 15-point lead. One of the things Coach Frizzell is going to talk to young John Johnson about as he puts Jeff Baxter in in place of John Johnson. That's the first Duke miss from the free throw line in this one. One more coming. And as I mentioned before, Maryland on their last series brought the ball down and played very patiently, but it's a little bit more difficult to do when you're down 13, 14 points. 34 to 19 in favor of Duke. Kevin Strickland will see his first activities of the evening. Taking over in the Duke backcourt for Tommy Amaker. And it's very seldom that uh, Coach Mike Krzyzewski gets an opportunity to rest his floor leader, Tommy Amaker, but with a cushion like this, it makes it a lot easier. 15-point Duke lead. They force the turnover. Dawkins comes out of the back. Three on nothing break. Would you believe a 17-point Duke advantage? And the loss of Keith Gatlin is really showing here. Maryland has turned the ball over too many times. And Bias goes baseline, bounces it off of his foot. Duke is on top of their game, and they're running their break to perfection. And Lefty Grizzell using his timeouts. So far to no avail. Time remaining first half, 7.57. It is Duke 36, Maryland 19. You saw Duke shooting almost 74%. And they've got a 25-8 run against Maryland over the last eight minutes. It was 13-12, a one-point game, and it was circle the wagon time for Maryland at that point. Kevin Strickland to Mark Allery looking low. A lot of inside movement for Duke. On the baseline, Strickland gets a little bit closer. Allery kept it alive. A sea of arms up around that basket, and Bias comes out of the pack for the Terps. 
one thing Maryland has to do now, they've got to establish themselves again. They've got to establish their confidence by getting the ball either inside or an easy 10, 12 footer. Jump shot up on the way by Derek Lewis, no good. Inside, rebound, there was a push off, no foul. The shot missed by Dave Dickerson. Loose ball outside, and Maryland could not maintain possession. It's out of bounds, off the hands of John Johnson. And in the case of the Blue, Goo De Blue Devils, when you're hot, you're hot, and the Terrapins are definitely not. That time they had an opportunity to recover that, that errant rebound, and they just couldn't. Duke had two and three guys on the ball, and that's what happens when you're playing real well. You get to cover all the loose balls. Lefty Drizel trying every conceivable combination. We mentioned Dave Dickerson just in, a 6'6 freshman from Denmark, South Carolina. There's Billis muscling his way in for the shot that failed to go, but it failed because of a foul on Lewis. And as you mentioned, the, um, the thin aspect of the Maryland bench shows up here when you have Lynn Bias having to play center. He's guarding uh, Jay Billis inside. That time Billis may be a bit too strong for Bias, who tried to front him. Ball was lobbed over his head, and Billis was inside for an easy layup. Number three on Lewis. And Len, I posed this question to you earlier tonight before we went on the air. How can Maryland be having all the problems it's having with essentially the same talent that Lefty Grizzell had at his disposal last year? Well, one thing you're missing, Marty, is the fact that Adrian Branch and Jeff Atkins were some vital cogs in the Maryland attack last year. They're gone. And to replace them, Coach Grizzell has had to put two freshmen in, in these areas. Also, the fact that he doesn't have a strong bench when games get close down the stretch, you never see the same faces, and that hurts your chemistry. It is 38 to 19. Duke leading. Baxter looks inside. Nothing going on there. Somebody has to come to the ball. Lewis gets it, plays it inside across the lane. Bias weaving his magic, puts it up and in. And that was about as good a ball movement sequence as I've seen here tonight with Maryland on offense. That time they moved the ball around. They exploited Duke's gambling defense. Dawkins finds the middle open. And Johnny Dawkins comes right down the heart of the Maryland defense. We've got to have somebody in there. Right now, I don't believe there's a natural center playing. Well, two All-Americans shooting the lights out at the moment. Dawkins for Duke with 12. Bias of Maryland with 12. They go the other way with exactly six minutes to go. 38-21, Duke in front. Billy King, whistled by Lenny Wirtz. And a holding foul against Maryland. Foul is on Dave Dickerson, and on the free throw line is Billy King. Tommy Amaker and David Henderson, you saw them come back. King out of Parkview High School in Sterling, Virginia. He drops in his third point. It is a 20-point lead. Take a look at what happened this afternoon over at the Smith Center in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, for a second straight Saturday. Beats a heavyweight as they knocked off Bobby Kremen's Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech. Thirty-nine to nineteen. The fact that uh, Maryland doesn't have um, a ball handling guard like a Keith Gatlin and only one real natural guard, Jeff Baxter, in there allows Duke to come out with three forwards. They've got David Henderson now playing in the backcourt, guarding John Johnson. Take it forty-one twenty-one, Duke. On the move, the jump shot off the baseline. It rolls in. Baxter hit it on the move for his first field goal. Forty-one to twenty-three. Heading toward the final five minutes of first half play from Duke University and Cameron Indoor Stadium. Danny Ferry open, wide open. Jeff Baxter claims a rebound. Jay Billis trying to cut in front and knock it away. And for his efforts, he picks up a personal foul as first. Georgia Tech down by 21 in the first half and came back to actually take the lead in the final half minutes, only to lose by one on a jumper by Mark Price. And they had the Tar Heels on the ropes, only to have North Carolina come back and beat them in a close one at College Park. And that's what I mean by chemistry. When you get in those tough games, you want to have the same people out there who react instinctively to each other. When you have different faces every time, it's going to be very difficult to hold together as a team. 41-23, jump hook by Billy King. Again, Duke is exploiting the middle of Maryland's defense without a natural center who knows how to go to penetration. They're going to get that all night. David Henderson with a steal. Could not get the bank shot to go down, and Maryland gets it back. John Johnson spins to the end line, throws up a prayer. Dillis clears it off for the home team, and here comes Tommy Amaker. He'll stop and pop. Henderson cuts across to claim the rebound. And Maryland is very rattled at this moment. The guards know that they should take the offensive game in control and maybe go to the basket, but they're taking ill-advised shots and not looking 
for any other of their Maryland teammates. Duke, on the other hand, is playing good team ball, moving it around just like that. Henderson makes it in and out. It's slapped out of bounds. It'll stay with Duke. And it gives Mike Krzyzewski a chance to bring Johnny Dawkins and Mark Allery into the lineup for Billy King and Danny Ferry. There's a look at the Duke coach. 101 wins in this his sixth year as head coach at Duke University. And he's got to be pleased tonight. I, I'm, I'm sure he was a bit worried of the fact that his team had lost two in a row. Amaker rarely will he force a pass, but he did then. Baxter tries to score against Dawkins and does. Good fast break triggered by Lenny Bias. Maryland got out there and filled the lanes really well. But as I mentioned with Mike Krzyzewski, he had to be worried that his team may come out here a bit apprehensive, but they came out smoking, and the gun is still being fired. Dawkins pulls the trigger. Billis rebounds. He'll take it back up. Missed that one. And Lewis is inside for the rebound. 43 to 25. Duke by 18. Let's see what Lenny Wirtz has for us. Apparently a foul against Duke away from the basketball. It'll be against Mark Allery. And that's part of the net that they're trying to throw around Len Bias. Allery tried to prevent, tried to prevent um, Bias from getting to the ball crossing the lane. There was a game you saw earlier this afternoon from Memorial Coliseum in Winston-Salem. Clemson and Wake Forest really went at it with Clemson hitting the free throws down the stretch to win by three. And I'm sure Coach Cliff Ellis is relieved after those tough losses against Georgia Tech and NC State and Virginia in the past couple of weeks. Can your ranking in those statistical categories be any more impressive than those owned by Len Bias? It has been that kind of year. And boy, I'll tell you, he has seen every type of conceivable defense just about there is to play in college basketball. The opposition stacks the defenses against him simply because Maryland has really not gotten a whole lot of offensive help from anybody else. Lane violation called against Duke on Bias's first free throw. He missed that, but he gets a reprieve and hits the first of the one and one. Bias with 13. And he has number 14, and it's 43 to 27. Turks again extending their defensive pressure. They've got to create some turnovers, and there's one successful way to do it. Force the long pass. Weldon Williams could not run it down as Duke is charged with its sixth turnover. I think they were caught, Duke that is, was caught in a bit of a surprise. Duke in front by 16, 43-27. Blue Devils have had a lead as big as 20. Bias lost it. It rolls into the hands of Mark Allery. Tommy Amaker on the move against the backpedaling Baxter. Jeff did a good job after Amaker shot by him. He reached around from behind and knocked it out of bounds. Well, you're right, Marty. He did a good job that time, but more times than not, you're going to get called when you reach around, when you wrap around as a guard. 15 turnovers total in the game, with Maryland showing nine. Allery with a bomb. Massenberg rebounds for Maryland. Baxter cross courting to Johnson. Dangerous pass when you've got quick defenders like Amaker and Dawkins around. And good. there's another turnover for Maryland. Good defense by Mark Gallery. That time he flicked the ball away from Len Bias, who's gonna make, about to make a strong power move inside. I don't think Mike Krzyzewski real pleased right now with a somewhat ragged play being exhibited by his club. Despite the big lead, he says timeout. And that's what we have with two minutes and 42 seconds remaining here in the first half. And right now, Duke in front by that impressive score, 43 to 27. The Blue Devils have missed their last six field goal attempts. That might have had something to do with a Mike Krzyzewski timeout. Well, I'm sure they mentioned that, um, particularly Mike Krzyzewski mentioned that you got a 16-point lead. Let's look for the good ones. We don't have to have showtime yet. Weldon Williams swings it out to Dawkins and just ticked out of bounds by John Johnson. Lefty Drizel bounces up off the Maryland bench. He didn't think his man touched it. Well, Maryland came out in the zone this time, trying to cross Duke up just a bit. And that time, Duke had to stand back and try to recognize what type of defense was played and try to develop some passing lanes. They rested David Henderson is back in for Duke. Dawkins kicks it off to Amaker. Cross-courting to Henderson and a nice bank shot. And that's one of the things that should be a no-no against a good tight zone, and that is penetration from a guard. If he can penetrate and make it through the baseline, puts a lot of pressure on that back line, plus he can pick out the open jump shooter. 45-27, Derek Lewis turns, shoots, and sticks it in. That's the first points tonight for Derek Lewis, who's averaging almost nine points a game. And he's one of those guys that has a step to the forefront, takes a good load offensively off bias. Inside Allery. 
Eight points for Mark Gallery. Ten points for David Henderson. A dozen for Johnny Dawkins. The Blue Devils are getting balanced scoring. Their lead goes back to 20. Inside the shot misses by Lewis. Amaker breaking quickly up court. Lewis didn't know where he was at that moment. He should have recognized by the lines on the floor he was too far under the basket. Henderson will try again. John Johnson weaving his way in and out of traffic. Curry takes a swipe at it. Still in the backcourt. And Lewis will bring it across the timeline and make it official. Baxter inside. Throws up. And shot in a second time tonight. Lenny has been called for a charging violation under similar circumstances. He, like teammate Derek Lewis, now have been hit with three personal fouls. Inside pass on the baseline. Billy King had it partially rejected. Dave Dickerson got a hand on it. Good weak side help by Dave Dickerson. Maryland comes back. 50, 49 seconds to go in the half. Lenny Bias trying to post up inside against Billy King, but in the last four or five minutes, the Maryland All-American has not been heard from. How about now? He got it. I think he heard you, Marty. <laughs> he has scored 16 of his team's 31. It is 47 Duke, 31 Maryland. The Duke's going to try and hold for one, obviously, with only 25 seconds left on the shot clock. If they score here, that more or less uh, stabs the dagger in just a little bit deeper. Maryland can't leave on a good note, and that will hurt them coming into the second half. They'd like to come out here with a bit more optimism, maybe on a, on a scoring note, but it's not going to happen right now. Shot clock off. Game clock down to six, five, four. Dawkins one-on-one, -on -one, throws it up. No good. Ball slapped to Quinn Snyder, the freshman. He hooks it up and in. Quinn Snyder. The freshman from Mercer Island, Washington, just off the Duke bench, picked it up and hit the jump hook to just beat the buzzer. We take a look at the individual scoring for the Maryland basketball team. And, of course, a big name has been uh, Len Bias, 16. After that, Jeff Baxter with four and Speedy Jones with three. And that's a graphic illustration of the severe weakness Maryland has offensively. There's no balance whatsoever. Johnny Dawkins, Tommy Amaker, Danny Ferry, Mark Gallery, David Henderson, jumper misses, rebound battle for OB. It'll belong to Maryland. And much more balanced scoring for the Blue Devils. Dawkins and Henderson in double figures. Allery not far away. And then there's Tommy Amaker and Billy King. Duke is extending their defense. They've picked up full court man-to-man. -man. Johnny Dawkins applying pressure to freshman John Johnson. They're going to pick up right where they left off. Johnny Johnson gives it up to Jeff Baxter. Lenny Bias, he's up front. Long and Lewis also starting the second half. So Tony Massenburg, the freshman, started the game. But Terry Long has replaced him here at the outset of half number two. And there's a, a foul call. That was a foul that David Henderson could afford to gamble on because it's only his first of the game. And, and Coach Guzel has started Terry Long inside because Long is about as close to a natural center as he has. And he's got to do something about the rebound deficit Maryland is suffering from. They kick it back outside to Baxter. He bends low. He decides to throw it up from 20. A little bit long. And Johnny Dawkins displays his great leaping ability. He wants to go all the way with it, and Baxter strips him of the ball. Can Dawkins catch up to him? He can, and it went off of Baxter, and it goes back to Duke. Baxter obviously heard the hoof beats. Mallory baseline jumper, and Mark Gallery has thrown in 10 points. Seems to be a foul inside. A little bit of difficulty here between Terry Long and Danny Ferry. You take a look at the turnover situation, and Duke has been playing amazingly well, having committed only seven errors up to this point. Well, they lead the league in forcing turnovers, and their turnover ratio, uh, turnovers committed versus turnovers forced, also leads the league. That foul was against Terry Long, so this could be a four-point swing for Duke, who leads by 20, and now leads by 22. And at the moment, Duke can do no wrong. Johnny Dawkins is starting to heat it up from outside. 53 to 31. Maryland still looking for its first second half points. Long pressured by Ferry. Gives it off to John Johnson. Bias goes baseline. He whips Ferry. He puts it up. He makes contact with Henderson. Bias.
Harris with a charge. Tries to get it in as close as he possibly can. Didn't look to pass off. Didn't look to pull up for a jumper. He feels he's got the load on his shoulders. Dawkins lost it on the drive. It's loose. It's picked up by Henderson. You just can't do everything yourself. This is a team game. And Lenny Bias just feels like he has to do it all. Allery got a Danny Ferry screen, but it goes out of bounds. And it'll go back to Maryland. The Terps, especially on offense right now, look totally disorganized. And now they say Duke ball. Well, the one thing about the Blue Devils, they're not relaxing even with a 22-point lead. They're still hustling. They still put two and three people covering the board regardless. Well, they clean up that wet spot down below before Mark Allery makes the trigger pass. Way outside into the hands of Tommy Amaker. Duke would appear to be on its way to a 17 win overall and a fifth victory in the conference. Line cross court pass, Henderson pops short. Bias battle Henderson for the rebound. It's out of bounds and Maryland gets it back. Well, there's still about 17 and a half minutes left to go and strange things have happened in games where there's a shot clock. But in order for those strange things to occur, Maryland has won. They've got to get on track offensively. They've got to get the ball inside the Lenny Bias and into Terry Long and the other front court people. And they've got to stop turning the ball over. Johnson shut off, now finds an opening, puts up the short jumper. Here comes Dawkins. He's a middleman on the break. He had it swatted away by Baxter, but it's Ferry. And now it's Amaker. There's David Henderson. He's all over the place. And Henderson's capitalizing on every Maryland mistake. That time, Terry Long had the man blocked out, Danny Ferry, but didn't go up with both hands. Amaker is again short on the jump shot. As Terry Long and Johnny Dawkins both sky for the rebound. And it looks like Danny Ferry is called for an infraction. Good block out by Terry Long. That time, he went up and he decided that he wanted the ball. Went up with both hands to try and grab their rebound. And he's also making Duke a better team this year in a starting role. I have always said that he's the catalyst. He's the one who makes this team go. He takes a lot of pressure off of Dawkins and Allery. And I guarantee you, he's one of the players that these NBA scouts on hand are looking at. Lenny Bias, he drops one through and on top of it draws a foul. There wasn't an awful lot Jay Billis could do on that play. One thing that you can't do is play behind the Lenny Bias. If you let him get the ball inside the paint, he's got a variety of moves that can kill you. Billy King, he has come off the Duke bench. Bias on the free throw line. And That's the first points of this second half, by the way, for Maryland. I'm pretty sure, Marty, that Billy King is in there primarily to guard Lenny Bias. They've got to start changing people up. 53 to 34 after the three-point play by Bias who has scored, by the way, 19 of Maryland's 34 points. Danny Ferry, not only a good rebounder, he's a good passer and tried to become a good shooter, but not this time. The pass goes back outside to Jeff Baxter. And Henderson appealing to official Dave Dodge. He felt like there was a little undue aggressiveness on the part of Glenn Bias, no whistle, and now they go down in a heat. Three players, Billis and Ferry of Duke, Massenburg of Maryland, and a hell ball. But we have a timeout call with 15 minutes and 58 seconds remaining in the game. Duke comfortably in front here at the break by a score of 53 to 34, and we'll return after this message. Well, we're set to get back to action with Duke enjoying a comfortable lead of 19, 53 to 34. Jeff Baxter looking for an open man and finally finds it underneath. Massenburg misses, gets it back, banks it in. Good second effort by the freshman. Maryland needs a little bit more of that. Tony Massenburg with four. David Henderson takes it to the hole. He's checked and fouled by Lenny Bias, who mildly argues a call with official Nolan Fine. That is in third on Bias. Well, I believe Bias recognized there was some contact, but I think he's trying to tell the official that Henderson initiated. But Henderson made a great move to blow down, blow down the sideline. Bias was a little slow getting back. Three team fouls now on Maryland here in the second half. Jump hook way off the mark by Henderson and played by Mr. Bias. He's a little over anxious, but Duke is going back to their plan of going to the man Lynn Bias is guarding just about every time down court, trying to put some pressure on Bias. Whistle away from the ball involving Henderson and Bias, and they get Henderson. 
Boa. That pass right into the eye of the Tiger by Baxter. And Duke forces a turnover. Dawkins up. No good. Tipped up and in by Billy King. And Billy King is a fine athlete. He's coming off the bench for Duke and providing a great spark. That time, he recognized the ball was short, made a nice tip in, beat all the Maryland players to the ball. Well, Mike Krzyzewski will wax eloquent about the contributions Billy King has made off the bench this season, and he's having another good one here tonight. That time, however, he fouls as the ball went inside to Massenburg. Baxter will play it inbounds for the men of lefty Drizel. He looks right, he looks left, he still looks, and Danny Ferry with a great save. About that play by the freshman falling out of bounds he got it back into play and now at the other end his jumper is long and Bill has tried to save it it'll be Duke's ball that was almost like one of those plays in baseball we see a guy make a great a great defensive play and he's the first guy up the next time around and hits a home run you know something about that game too don't you I've seen you Marty. I've seen you. <laughs> listen to <it>. <laughs> <laughs> So Duke keeps the ball as Dreg Nared, the 6'4 freshman from Wilmington, Ohio, comes back to the Maryland lineup. Mallory briefly had a screen from Billis, but the Duke defense breaks through it. Dawkins shovels it off. It goes from Mallory to Ferry, and a three-second violation against Duke. It's good ball movement, but also you have to credit the Maryland defense. That time they caught a couple of players up in the air about to take jump shots. They put hands up and forced them to alter their shot and look for someone else. That time the pass is moved around just a bit too slowly. Duke was called for three seconds. Make it eight turnovers now against Duke to 15 for Maryland. 55, 36. And another turnover charge to Maryland. Ferry, and how about that pass? And the resulting shot by Allery. Well, with 14 minutes left, Duke is starting to feel that it's showtime right now, but that was a good defensive play by Billy King, who left his man completely on the other side. 57-36. Narrett escapes. Dawkins takes a pass inside, and Ferry nailed with a personal foul as Tommy Amaker starts back off the Duke bench. Pass inside. Massenburg slams it home. He caught Allery with his back. That was a well executed To Tony Massenberg, and he took advantage. Well, that's slam dunk. 57-38. Dawkins up and in at the other end, and Johnny Dawkins is four at home 16. Well, if you're going to be content with trading baskets, you might as well give it up tonight, but that's what Maryland's doing right now. The lead back to 21 for Duke, 59-38. Lenny Bias fakes the jumper, tries to get closer, pulls up off the baseline, misses badly. Allery tried to kick it off to Dawkins, but the pass was short, and it was intercepted by Tom Speedy Jones. I guess the Duke crowd is paying attention tonight. Foul call. Mark Allery said, no, I didn't. Dave Dodge said, you did. And Mark Allery has something to think about now. That's his fourth personal. Well, the inside play for Maryland is getting a bit ragged. They can't seem to get the ball. The Duke players are fronting all the Maryland postmen, and the Maryland guards or uh, wingmen outside are trying to lob the ball over that front. The only problem is the Duke defenders on the other side of the lane are recognizing this, and they're getting running starts towards that pass, and they're knocking it out of bounds or making a steal, as Billy King did a couple of plays ago. Scratch one of those fouls against Gallery. That's only three against the Duke star frontliner, but the free throw misses. The follow shot by Bias, and he dots that exclamation point. And that time, that's one of the rare times you'll find a player like Mark Allery concentrate on the play before. I think he fell asleep just a bit and allowed Bias in there for the dunk. Bias has scored 21. Dawkins lost it as he started up with a jump shot, and King saves it. And those are the intangibles that you talk about when you talk about Billy King. He does a lot of things well on this court. A lot of them don't show up in the box score. Dawkins drops it off for King. He doesn't have anything going, so he plays to Amaker. He tries to create something for Dawkins. And Maryland getting after him now, at least on this Duke possession. The only problem with that, though, Marty, is that they're taking a lot of time off the clock. Billy King slapped it out of bounds. That's Duke's way of milking the clock. They're forcing Maryland to come out and play that pressure defense. And what Duke will do in turn is to capitalize with back doors and easy layups. Gambling on the Maryland part is not going to help them much. Indeed, Maryland has not done a whole lot. 
about the way things stood at halftime. And they get King again. We've had a lot of fouls, Lynn, called off the ball tonight. Well, with a Lenny Bias on a Maryland team, and you know that he is their primary scorer, I think Mike Krzyzewski, who has probably put three guys or four guys on him tonight, looks at that as being 20 fouls that he can waste on a Len Bias, particularly when you're up this, this many points. You can always have people going at him. It's going to wear him down eventually. So Len Bias, who played his high school basketball at Northwestern High, native of Landover, Maryland. It's right around the corner from the University of Maryland. <laughs> Lefty didn't have to go too far to recruit him, did he? <laughs> no, it's like picnicking in your backyard and you come up with a feast here. That's a pretty good analogy. I'm a lawyer, man. I'm I can <laughs> dig it. Bias has a total now of 23. Loose ball. Maryland comes up with it. It's thrown up by Narrett. It hangs and goes and a foul to boot against Duke. Greg Narrett, the freshman, gives him a big lift. And if you've got any um, recollection of the last game, Maryland at one point was down 17, 18 points, and they made a run at Duke. Unfortunately, it was too little, too late. But once again, Maryland extends their defense with some full court pressure. Bias gets his hand on the ball. Narrett looks up, pump fakes, and goes up strong and completes, and will possibly complete a three-point play. He gets the two on that play. That foul, number three, against Tommy Amaker. Narrett misses. Allery rebounds for the home team. But Duke has to be careful not to not to let themselves down here, not to let their guard down. They've still got 12 minutes to go. They've got to take some time off this clock and get some good shots. Make Maryland expend a lot of their energy playing defense. Maryland is close to within 15, and if you join us late, you're saying, so what? Well, I'll tell you what, that's as close as they've been in a while. Narrett is charged with a Maryland foul. And now we'll get a timeout call. 11 minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the game with a score. The Duke Blue Devils 59, the University of Maryland Terrapins 44. The Maryland Terrapins making a bit of a run at the moment. They have cut the Duke lead to 15, 59, 44. Duke owns possession. Tommy Amaker looks outside and delivers it into the hands of Johnny Dawkins. You know, Marty, in both those timeouts, you can almost hear what the coaches were saying. Duke was telling the team, you got to be careful. And Dawkins kills him from the outside again. And Dawkins Lefty, with 18. And Lefty was telling his team, there's a ray of light here. Let's capitalize. Let's open the window a little bit. They work it around. Maryland does inside. That's an offensive foul. And that was a good call by Dave Dodge. Not much doubt about it. Tony Massenberg lowered that shoulder. And the official had the best seat in the house to make the call, which he did. Lefty with a somewhat incredulous look on his face. He didn't obviously see it that way. And those are one of the, that's one of the situations where we mentioned at the top of the show, you've got inexperienced people in the game at crucial parts of the, in, in crucial times. And one of the problems is you can't make mistakes like that and expect to get back in the game. Well, it's reversed itself a bit. The field goal percentages from half one to half two as Kevin Strickland was called for over and back by Lenny Wirtz. And Mike Krzyzewski wants to discuss it a bit. Well, I think you caught Kevin Strickland straddling the line, but an official will call your position if you jump in the air from where you took off from, not from where you land. And that time, Strickland straddled the line and was called for a backcourt violation. 61-44 Blue Devils. Turnaround jumper by Massenburg Long. Up with the ball, Kevin Strickland. Bounces to the cutting. Henderson, he missed the slam, but he was fouled by freshman Massenburg. Well, Maryland's transition game has got to improve. It can't get much worse. Here's a nice play on the side from Williams. Sees Henderson on the baseline. And Henderson goes up pretty high. Glenn, I've got to wonder. That was a bit of a showtime move right there. You have been in this position before. You're coveted by the pros. There must be seven NBA scouts here tonight. The players have to know that. Oh, definitely. The players are aware of it. When you're a senior and you're going well, like the three seniors for the Duke team or Lynn Bias, you're aware that every night you're going to be scrutinized by the professionals, um, professional scouts particularly. Here, David Henderson on that play, though, I really believe the only way he thought he was going to get that ball in was to slam. And I think it was a good move on his part. And it looked pretty, too. Sure did. He scored 12 as he hits the two free throws. We've got 11 minutes remaining in the game. And Duke is up the lead to 19 at 63-44. Pass off the foot of Lewis. He recovers. 
tried to kick it inside. The pass deflected away, and uh, another Duke University foul, Mark Allery. And Duke is still keeping the pressure on Maryland. They recognize there's still plenty of time, and they don't want to let down, and they play their best ball when they're out pressuring and forcing turnovers. Merritt has come up dry on three free throw attempts. It remains 63 Duke, 44 Maryland. Duke back to the offensive end of the floor. Maryland's in a zone right now. I guess they want Duke to move the ball, maybe try to mix up their patterns a bit. They want to try and force them into some lower percentage shots. That's a way to beat a zone, and Dawkins is one of the best in the business. Particularly when they go in, those are the types of shots you want to beat a zone. The second ranking scorer in all time, Duke basketball history. Johnny Dawkins at the other end. A prayer is thrown up. And another Duke foul whistles to stop play with 10-18 showing on the clock. Massenberg with the hit gets his club back to within 20, 65-45. Danny Ferry, after getting a blow on the bench, returns to action. And Massenberg with one more coming. He has scored seven and got the roll. It has been a rebound night of sorts for the Duke Blue Devils. Maryland seems to be right now in a, some type of triangle defense. Jumper by Strickland, uncontested, but he missed it. Billis hooks it up and in. He's fouled. Billis shooting from the free line. Ball hangs on the rim, comes off. It's slapped out by Maryland. And let me correct myself. That was uh, Tony Massenberg and Dave, Dave Dickerson. It was Dickerson who was playing man-to-man -man in that triangle, and that time... He allowed his, the man he was guarding, who happened to be Billis at that time, to get into the easy, easy position. Indeed. Dave Dickerson saw a brief first half action. He's back in there now. Maryland's back in the man-to-man. -man. Here's Ferry shooting. He rattled at that time, having it come out. And uh, who did they get? Apparently Billis. He has now joined his teammates on the Maryland front line. Lenny Bias gets his 24th point, 24 of Maryland's 47. Well, with the substitution of Greg, I, I think it's a good idea to now start giving people who normally don't get an awful lot of time, give them some time in a game like this, because it'll help you down the stretch. Give them the experience, particularly against a team like Duke, to throw so many defenses at you, so much pressure at you. It's a good, it's a good learning experience. Duke leading 67 to 48. We're under 10 minutes remaining here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Henderson double team, and Maryland got the ball, but traveling ball against Dickerson. Good pressure by the Maryland Tarpons, but a bit of over-anxiousness caused a turnover. This is, these are the times when you create a turnover, you get a loose ball, you've got to catch the ball first. You can't do anything unless you've gotten possession. Both coaches have played a lot of folks in this game. That is a normal pattern for Mike Krzyzewski, but uh, again, Lefty Grizzell doing everything in his power to try and find something that will click. And he's not been successful tonight against his superior Duke team. Strickland looking for his first points. And the sophomore from North Surrey High School in Mount Airy, North Carolina, gets it. Sixty-nine forty-eight. The Blue Devils will sleep well on this night. Duke now is in a 2-3 zone. They're going to they're gonna slow Maryland's pace down. Now, Bias has uh, displayed simply a virtuoso performance for the Maryland Terrapins. He has scored 27 points, one less than he had against Duke back on the 4th of January at College Park. And it has to be tough on a young fellow like that because he has to assume almost a total scoring load, and he's done it in fine fashion. 69 to 50 the score. David Henderson wanted to go to Billis. He was checked inside. Wants to go and does to Danny Ferry. He turns on his man. Puts up the bank shot. No good. The tip fail by both Strickland and Billis. The Duke will maintain possession of the ball. Well, Maryland at this moment, they are playing good defense, but they've got to do something about those second shots. Duke has been getting all the good offensive rebounding position. Here's Ferry taking it to the hole. Put it up too strong. Rebounded by Baxter of Maryland. I like Derek, Danny Ferry, particularly from the top of the key. He is not ashamed to put the ball on the floor, as a lot of big men are, and take it to the basket. I'll tell you, with this outstanding crop of seniors due to graduate at the end of the year for Duke, he will be called upon for more offensive responsibility by 
a sizable margin next year. David Gregg scores for Maryland. 69-52. And another thing about Danny Ferris, he's fortunate to be playing with these great seniors on a great team. It allows him to experiment and play, play another type of game. Has not been sharp in his shooting tonight. And that's an offensive foul. Time remaining, seven minutes and 52 seconds with a score, 69 to 52. Heading toward the final 752 of play here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke leading Maryland 69 to 52. And for the Duke Blue Devils next up, they'll have Harvard in a non-conference matchup here Monday night. And then two conference games later on next week. Clemson here Wednesday. They'll be playing in Greensboro against Wake Forest next Saturday afternoon. While for Maryland, they'll have Wake at home on Wednesday night and a non-conference affair with the defending NCAA champion Villanova under Rolly Massimino next Saturday in Philadelphia. Lenny Bias baseline and beyond, and he scores again. Nice move by Bias, and I am amazed, though, that the, the Blue Devils came out picking up full court. I, I don't believe they know how to play any other way. It's the great, great pressure team. Duke back again, or Maryland back again, within 15 of Duke. Len Bias with 29 points tonight. David Henderson gets backcourt pressure. Duke beats it. Dawkins kicks it off to King, and he tried to do a 360, but got hammered in midair. King Long. And he misses both of them. Duke comes up with nothing as a result of that possession, and Maryland comes back. Well, with still a 15-point lead, Duke is going to play pressure defense. They're going to make Maryland work for everything, and I think they want to close the door in the next few minutes. And he bias triple team, gets off the jump shot to short. Allery had it swatted away, and Dickerson got it. Your teammate, like Lenny Bias, is going to take the shot. You've got to get to that position even earlier than some of the Maryland players did. You've got to establish that position so that if the ball does come off, you're there. And you need two guys, three guys to cover that area. Three men were on Len Bias, so that means that at least two guys were open. Len, considering all the defensive attention that that young man draws, I don't know how he'd react if he got an open baseline jumper. Well, I'm sure he would have his mouth agape and wonder <laughs> what he's supposed to do with it, but... But something tells me within a split second, he'd know, that he'd know exactly what to do with it. Allery hits one, but misses a second. He enjoys at the moment a 13-point night, and Duke leads 76 to 70-54. Under seven minutes remaining. Bias gets it back to the basket, swings it back outside. Derek Lewis gives it up to Dave Dickerson. Here's Amaker tipping it away, but Baxter runs it down. Now it goes to the baseline. Bias, and he hit it fading away and on an angle. Well, that time Jeff Baxter made good penetration. Looked for Len Bias all the way. Jeff Baxter didn't even look at the basket and found his All-American teammate. 31 for Bias. Duke misses. Bias has it batted away, and there's a late whistle by Len Wirtz, but a good call. And Lenny Wirtz did the thing that he's supposed to. He waited to see if they make the call. If they didn't, he saw it. He makes the call. Bias has been perfect from the free throw line. He's 10 out of 10. In addition to scoring 32 points, he's also hauled down six rebounds. I don't know what more you could ask from him that he has not already given. All of a sudden, it's a 12-point game. 70-58. Dawkins reversing. And missing. And a foul. And that's on Henderson. Two quick fouls on David Henderson. I don't need to tell you, we still have time to go for Maryland. They're down by 12, and there's time out on the floor with 6.10 to go. Duke 70 against the rebounding Terrapins at 58. Maryland has pulled to within 12. And they can get even closer if the freshman Dickerson can hit the free throw. And as we mentioned before, Marty, Maryland has come back. They came back from 21 against Georgia Tech. They actually came back against this Duke team in January from a 17-point deficit only to lose by six points. And I'm sure Duke is aware of that. They're not going to let up one bit. 
It is a 10 point game. And all of a sudden, it starts to get interesting. Maryland extends their defense right now in a full court press situation. Amaker shoots on the move, and he gets a big basket for his ball club. And Tommy Amaker has got to do that, particularly on this press situation, because he's going to have to be a threat now, and Maryland's going to have to spread their defense a little more and guard him. Those in foul trouble, it has obviously been a very physical basketball game. And Duke really picking up the tempo defensively now. They know they might have their hands full. The ball is loose, and the battle won by Allery, but he could not save it. Maryland will keep it. Up until that point, Maryland had shown a little bit of poise. A number of times, they had lanes to the basket, but rather than drive down those lanes, they opted to move the ball around and look for the better shot. Unfortunately, that ball was tipped and kicked around, but they've got another chance. Well, they're waiting for the inbounds pass to be made, and it's a looping pass outside of Dickerson. He gives it right back to Baxter, and he shows good decision in bringing it back outside. The turnaround jump shot by Greg misses, and Bias called for an obvious foul. He knocked down Mark Allery. And Len Bias, as a result of that foul, is one away from the early gate. And you know, that's a difficult call to make when you have people wrapped up and tangled up. Because one guy falls, sometimes, you know, you have to wonder if he lost his balance or if he was pushed down. The official saw Lenny Bias push him down and made the good call. 74-60 in favor of Duke on two big hits by Mark Gallery. Gallery with 15 points. Johnny Dawkins, a high point man for the Blue Devils with 20. Inside to Bias, pinned on the baseline. He made the most of a difficult situation. And what more can you do? Here's a guy who's gotten the ball on the baseline a number of times in his double and triple team. He's still slippery enough to slide through the double team and lay it in. Now Duke trying to beat the 10-second count, which they do. Henderson started baseline, pulls it back outside to Dawkins. Well, Maryland's pressure has definitely been fired up just a bit. They've come out, and they've been placing a lot of pressure on the Duke guards, forcing them to give the ball up ahead of them to the big men along the baseline. And Duke now wants to slow the tempo just a bit. They're going to look for good shots, and if not, they're going to at least milk that clock to a 5, 8 second. Duke is up by 12, and they are starting now to use some time, indeed. The shot clock at 4. The pass to Allery. Good pass by Tommy Amaker. He set it all up. That was a spot pass. Am I mean, Allery wasn't even in position, but Amaker and Allery read each other very well. Amaker dropped a little bounce pass to the spot he knew Allery was going to occupy. 76-62, Derek Lewis. The jumper coming by Dickerson. The long rebound. Battle for control by Ferry. Throws it away at center court. Baxter quickly back with the ball. He'll throw it up, and it misses. And there's Dawkins, and he's fouled. So Jeff Baxter is another one of a growing number of players performing with four personal fouls. We mentioned earlier Johnny Dawkins, the second all-time scorer in Duke basketball history. He is averaging 18.7 points a game if he maintains that average. He will catch Duke's all-time scorer, Mike Jaminski, in the final regular season game. And Michael Jaminski is an old teammate of mine with the New Jersey Nets, and he's very proud of that record, but I'm sure he feels it couldn't have happened, it couldn't happen to a more um, accomplished and, and more talented athlete than Johnny Dawkins. There's another loose ball situation and goes against Maryland. Curry comes up with it, plays to Tommy Amaker. 3.40 to go. Duke by 15 and possession. The Blue Devils lead 77-62. And here's a situation where the loss of a Keith Gatlin means so much to Maryland. Keith Gatlin is a good offensive player. He averages almost 10 points a game. He's the type of guy who could take a Tommy Amaker and maybe back him down. Keith Gatlin is 6 feet 5 inches tall, a good ball handler, and, and a point guard. And Tommy Amaker is the point guard. In a man-to-man -man situation, Gatlin could make this a very night, rough night for Tommy Amaker if he had the opportunity. Duke continues to kill time on the clock. Dawkins, he just got out of control and lost the ball. Back comes John Johnson for the Maryland Terrapins, and he replaces Dave Dickerson. While it's late in the game, and by the score, it doesn't seem to be a crucial situation. We have a few freshmen out there once again, and at the times when Maryland really needs some experience and some leadership. Greg drops it off for Nary, the high bank shot, too strong. Danny Ferry, underhands, two-hand style to Tommy Amaker. 
Maryland made a brief run. They got to within 10. But Duke hitched themselves up by the proverbial bootstraps and have shot back out in front by 15. And the nails are about to be placed in this coffin tonight. Terps can go back, though, and they can recognize their mistakes. Maybe they can learn from some of these things. The turnovers hurt them an awful lot, and the fact that they could not get anyone to step forward and help Lynn Bias in the offensive category. 13, 12, 11 seconds on the shot clock. 2.20 remaining in the game. Tommy Amaker lets it fly. Almost throws up an air ball, but he gets his own missed shot back and misses again. Derek Lewis stripped by Amaker, but Maryland will get it. That's a good hustle by Tommy Amaker trying to, um, to uh, atone for that error, and the error was the fact that he got the offensive rebound, and knowing that the time is more or less two minutes left, he could have brought it back outside, but I guess at this point in time, everybody wants to pump up their scoring average just a little bit, and Amaker is such an unselfish player, you can't blame him for looking for the shot. Johnny Johnson looking low, as all the Maryland players do for Lenny Bias. He finally gets the ball and hits a shot, an exact replay of the one he hit a few minutes ago. Well, he's hiding along that baseline. He's getting behind the defenders, and when you get to a blind spot of a defender, particularly along the baseline, there's very little he can do once you get the ball, except possible foul you if you go up as strong as a Lenny Bias. All he's done is score 37. But precious little help. An ongoing problem for Maryland. Here's Johnny Dawkins in the paint. Foul call. Len Bias said he traveled, and he works said he was fouled. And the perpetrator, Greg Narrett. 77-64 Duke with a minute 27 remaining. Dawkins fires, and he throws in his 22nd point. Lenny Bias, check these numbers out. 18 field goal attempts, 13 hits. Perfect from the free throw line, 11 for 11. For that All-American, it seems like it's all in a night's work. Sometimes it seems he's playing on a slightly higher plane. Now he shows a little bit of his ball handling skills here. 78-64, that's a facet of the game that he has had to work on at Maryland, and he's done it. Dawkins will take it all by himself, but the foul came before the shot. He'll get two, and the foul called against John Johnson. Obviously, Johnson put his hand on on the players and you have to call a foul and you possibly have to call it intentional because he didn't go after the ball but that should be the, the operative word whether you operative situation whether you're going after the ball or not and so far the referees have taken that to heart well he certainly didn't go after Dawkins as aggressively this time to get charged with a two-shot foul as he did earlier in the game it is now 80 64 in favor of Duke with only 65 ticks of the clock remaining. Bias fires short. Villa steps in front of Lynn to get the rebound and plays off to Quinn Snyder. Johnny Dawkins in a hurry. Plays to Strickland. He banks it up. It rolls off. Offensive foul against Kevin Strickland. All the starters now are out. Quinn Snyder, Kevin Strickland, John Smith, Martin Nestle, Jay Billis. Doing it for the Duke Blue Devils. The jump shot by Derek Lewis. Way off the mark. And who committed the personal foul? It's going to be against the Blue Devils. And it will put a Maryland Terrapin on the free throw line. John Smith gets his first. And this, this is one of the most difficult times for a player, particularly a Lynn Bias, to come out here and play. All Lenny is playing for now, I'm sure, is to uh, put on a great show. Not to say that he hasn't so far, but he's going to go for the all-time scoring mark and anything else he can right now. Because there's really no incentive. And for the other starters, it's the same thing. The only thing you can do right now is regroup if you're left with yourself and come back for the next ACC tilt. 39 for Len Bias. Kevin Strickland cautiously from backcourt to frontcourt to Quinn Snyder to Jay Billis. They swing it around as Maryland is forced to chase, but it's pretty much academic at this stage with 25 seconds to go. Billis misses. The loose ball finally picked up by Maryland, and the ball hit the sideline. Well, nothing else has been going right, so you can't expect that call to go right for Maryland. But I have to say, Coach Mike Krzyzewski has to be very, very happy with the way his team has responded, bouncing back from those two losses. They played superlative defense. They got the ball to the people they wanted to, and they executed very well. I'm sure he's quite happy, and with Harvard coming up, it's another game that they can tune up and get ready for this Georgia Tech and North Carolina showdown. Ten seconds to go. Len Bias going for a 40-point night. 
And he does it with a vengeance. Two seconds, one second. It is all over. The final score from Cameron Indoor Stadium here at Duke, the Blue Devils 80, the Maryland Terrapins 68.